What's going on? James Bond is here. In this video, I'm going to share with you a live sales call. And along that journey, throughout this entire call, I will show on the screen notes of exactly why I was asking the question, what I was hoping the answer would be, what notes I was taking, and everything in between. It's actually really, really good. For those of you who want to kind of see the, the qualification interview process, I put a video on the only four questions you need to ask. Uh, and then sub questions. And I refer to those throughout the entire uh, conversation in here. I want you to notice a few things. Number one, I don't show his face because I just don't want to. I don't think it's fair, right? Just because I'm training people how to do this, I don't think that you know he needs to be on YouTube. So I blocked out his face, but within that block, you're gonna see all the notes I was taking while I asked those questions. So it actually worked out well. In addition, you're gonna notice that out of the 28 minutes of this call that I did, and I believe me, I cut out some stuff uh, that just, you know, laughing and stuff like that, that didn't matter. Um, I spoke for eight minutes out of the 28 minutes. I let him talk. I let him kind of guide the conversation. And then I use the information to help sell my services. And you're gonna watch that transition and, and how I kind of went about it, okay? Um, this was a warm call. so. This was a qualification interview. This is not a hard sell call. Uh, and I want you to follow along and I want you to watch and pause it and read the notes. You don't even need to pause it. They're up there long enough that you can listen and read at the same time or pause it and read it and then continue to listen. Um, it's really, really good, I believe. Uh, do me a favor and comment, like, subscribe, uh, because at the end of this video, and by the way, the best part is the end uh, because you're gonna see how he, he basically went from kind of answering questions to convincing himself that he needs to do this, that he needs this service. And, you know, it, it, it just was very easy. Okay. Uh, they don't all go like this, but I think it's, it's good for a motivational perspective to understand that, yeah, not every call goes good, but the ones that do are fun to have and they're worth, um, they're worth going through uh, the bad calls to get to the good calls is basically my point. So enjoy it. Uh, if you found it useful, so again, subscribe, comment, like, it gets out to more people. And uh, toward the end of this video, you're gonna see um, basically exactly how this guy is going to become a client. Enjoy it. I'm just gonna kind of ask some questions to kind of get to know the business a little bit, what you've done in the past, uh, what you plan on doing, what kind of goals you have, what you have in place. Yeah. And kind of just see where you want to go with there. So we'll just keep it nonchalant and uh, can move forward after to see what we want to do. Yeah, man. Sound good? So tell yeah, me, good. you got two po two parts of the business, right? Uh, kind of more than two. But yeah, so we, we've kind of got the GC side where we, it's just what it sounds like, we GC projects either yep. for ourselves or for other people. We've got the hardscaping side, which is like pool pavers, outdoor kitchens, shit like that. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the, you know, really, if you ask me what we are, we're pro property developers, real estate developers. Um, and then as part of that, there's sort of the, pro the property management side of it. But yeah, I mean, I would say in terms of like the sort of like forward facing side of things, it's the GC and the hardscaping. And then, you know, when we develop a building, I mean, listen, you'll tell me where I'm wrong, which will probably be more than one place. But like <laughs> um, in my mind, you guys could be super helpful on the hardscaping side. Yeah, and when we develop a building, we try to to at least get them leased up without brokers. Which means that like what I've done effectively is we've been running Google ads for like three hundred and something, three hundred fifty bucks a month. Let's call it um, for the property that I'm that I'm sitting in right now. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's been really like very effective. Like we've gotten uh, I don't know maybe two hundred leads over the last two years. Obviously, some of them which are not good, and some of which are pretty good. But like at the, at the end of the day we've been able to do that all with brokers. Now, as we continue to develop properties and have more of them over time, you know, our ability to get good at that. I mean, listen, I hacked this together myself going on Google AdWords and it worked okay. You guys will do better. I know that. Mm -hmm. But the point is our ability to do well on that will be a real benefit for me and for uh, us. You know, so, so for me, at least in my mind right now, it's like figuring something out for the hardscaping stuff and then getting good. Although I would say the hardscaping thing is kind of priority one for me, right? Because mm -hmm. like it's January, I'd like for us to kind of get this to a place where we've got busy, where I've got a project manager, manager that works specifically on that. And I want to keep them rolling the building stuff. You know, we, you know, at our scale, we're doing one, maybe two buildings a year. Um, so although I want to figure that out at a high level, we don't, I don't think we have to focus on that like today, this week, that kind of thing. You know? Yeah. 
All right. So hardscaping is number one. Um, so the buildings you're developing, the ads that you're running is basically to fill fill up like a commercial, right? Yeah, it's commercial. And it, it is a little bit, the types of tenants that we get are a little bit more unique than like your average office building. Right. So as a result, I think they're a little easier to advertise for, honestly. Um, you know, like there, it's like, you know, maker space, creative office, artist loft, that kind of thing. Oh, okay. And, and particularly where we now maybe in Brooklyn, that would be a dime a dozen, but where we yeah. are, it's not. <laughs> so gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And so typically people that are looking for that, they'll just Google like, you know, office space near me or. You know, yeah. Like you know, that. and like normally like a bigger client, bigger tenant would probably hire a broker, broker. or something like that. We're talking about smaller businesses, one to four or five person businesses typically. You know, they're they're not sophisticated real estate people. They're just going to go on Google, look for space. And if yep. we can come up and look cool and, you know, honestly, our buildings are cooler than the other options are going to have. So like if we mm -hmm. can just get them to be aware of us, like it'll go fine. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's stick on hardscaping. So hardscaping, um, who typically is using the services? Is it like, you know, residential? Is it? you know, commercial. So, so to date, at least they're, they've 95% have been residential ultimately. Okay. Uh, and 95% have been referred to us by a commercial entity. Mm -hmm. So I, I was telling Eric, I don't have to go through the whole thing, but long story short, like I lucked into this, like I had through the nature of doing the development and GC work that we do. I had a crew of guys that are very good at hardscaping and we did it for a friend and the pool company called me up and was like, Hey, this is good. Would you want to do more? And I kind of like slow played it for a while, you know, because I didn't, I honestly, I didn't want it to grow too quickly because we weren't ready for it. Yep. Um, and now I'm kind of like, all right, let's go. Like I hired a guy, like I'm ready to kind of do it. But I mean, like, you know, we have no marketing. Like, like literally it has been, gets a customer and they refer, I don't think they refer all of their people to me, but they refer enough mm -hmm. that I've been able to kind of, it's been like a side business, but now I'm ready for it to be like a real business line, you know? Right. So basically you don't, you, you want to scale it where you don't, you know, if yeah. pools doesn't do enough pools, then you have no work type thing. Correct. I mean, literally it would go away now. So no, obviously we're not that dumb. I mean, like we, we're, we're out, we're doing outreach right now with some other pool companies, with some contractors, like other commercial entities in particular that can like funnel us business. Mm -hmm. And then obviously they're, and they're, obviously that's great. I mean, a pool company is like really ideal for this because yeah. If someone's already agreed to put a pool in, like they don't really have but a choice but to do the hardscaping. Like it's not either or, like you're doing both. Right. Yeah. So yeah. um, so they're perfect for us. They really are. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, we need we we need to do a better job of like some CRM stuff and the referrals from existing clients or past clients, you know, they, that could be beneficial. And then the retail side that I think you guys can help us with, like getting more people, um, you know, getting more potential. Clients. Now, the one thing, and you'll have to educate me or we'll, we'll learn together. Like, I think that we'll probably get, I'm, I'm, I'm totally on board with like working with you guys. Don't get me wrong, but I suspect that we'll get more like, like when I get a lead from the Jersey pools, it's hundred percent qualified lead. Like they're doing sure. something mm -hmm. like, and we get nine out of 10 of them. Like, yeah. you know, every once in a while, someone's price conscious to go with someone else. Um, I'm sure that some of what we bring in like through like online, some of it will be BS. It is what it is, but we'll just have to get better at like, getting real ones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, of course, you know, that'll be, that's the struggle with every single business running any sort of ads is the filtering yeah. process. And we, we yeah. can put something in place for that to at least deter um, the majority of the, let's call it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then ultimately really probably, uh, and Eric has mentioned this to me, you know, the, the biggest piece of the filtering process outside of a survey that we can put in there by asking, you know, high quality questions of like, first of all, where do you live? So then we know, is it a, you know, is it a decent place that you're living in or you just want like a patio that not even a patio, a walkway from the front to the back. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's things that we can put in place for that, but yeah, there'll, there'll always be, this just yeah. part of business. You know, that. I, I totally agree, of course. Yeah. So what's the average, uh, what would you say? How many jobs have you done? Like in the last couple of years, let's say. Uh, it's not that many. We call it 15 or so 15, okay. maybe, yeah. maybe 15, maybe 20. Well, actually, since you said that, let me just ask this because I'll ask it eventually. What service areas? So we've been focused on Long Beach Island, like just because pools are selling their pools. That's where, you know, we go a lot vacation wise. And that's the guy that Michael that I hired as a PM. He lives down that way. So it makes sense. Yeah. But I would say location wise, I would be focused on either LBI and or sort of like the Princeton, uh, Bucks County area, Princeton, New Jersey or Bucks County, you know, PA. Um, yep. In large part because 
our crews, the guys who actually do the physical work all live in Trenton. They're all basically all Guatemalan guys. Yeah. Um, and so Princeton and is, uh, it's easier for them, honestly. It's, you know, 20 minutes away instead of an hour and a half. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, how far north would you go from Long Beach Island or you wouldn't? Like I mean, Ortley Beach or uh, Seaside or like any of that area? Just curious. I don't know. I don't have a great. I mean, if we can get enough. Or big enough job or. Exactly. I mean, if we were a big enough job, I might. If we could get, you know, I, I, I would. I think that honestly, I think that there's probably enough. My first priority is to kind of have steady work year round, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and once we get to that, then if that means expanding north or whatever, I'd be open to it. Mm -hmm. Probably would mean adding more crews. It might mean adding management. Like for now, my mentality, and you got you guys could talk me out of this if you think differently about it. Um, but right now, my mentality is like I think that there's probably enough between those two areas to have a pretty full slate. And if we fill that slate, then let's go further. You know. Yep. But they're both yep. F1 high-end areas where I have connections and relationships, which helps too. And where they're in, you know, by almost by definition, a lot of these folks, like if they're doing something like they're also going to want an outdoor kitchen or whatever, they're going to need plumbers. They're going to need like other parts of the puzzle that we can provide. If I go to Ortley Beach, I don't know anybody there. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it gets a little harder to actually do these things. Um, do you, so uh, of the 15 to 20 jobs, they were all referrals. Do you ever get repeat? jobs no, probably not I, right i doubt and i doubt we ever will right yeah i mean okay now, so there are things we could lean into in terms of the landscaping and stuff but like to be honest at least right now i don't want to you know we could i, I don't i have no interest in having them set up to do you know maintenance like man's the landscaping maintenance or any of that mm -hmm. it's a whole different thing like right now i want to get in like we'll plant plant you know as part of this process like if, like if we need to put in beds and plant things we'll do that but I have no interest in like having sending guys to weed every two weeks or something like that's not. Yeah. All right, cool. What do you, what would you say that your average job is? About around, I would say the average is around 60,000. All right. So if your average is around 60, and I, I'm only asking this so I can understand kind of the cost, you know, cost per acquisition versus profit. What, what do you think the profit is on a $60,000 job? So we're, we're aiming. And it's funny because like I'm working with like a financial guy, like we're, we're trying to like, Figure that out in two weeks, like what our revised goals should be. But like I've been shooting for 40 to 45 percent operating margins. OK, you know, now we don't you know, sometimes we get there. Sometimes we don't like we've had a couple. We had one that I mispriced last year, honestly, that like we probably actually lost a thousand bucks. But, you know, generally speaking, we're making about 40 percent on that. OK, we're trying to anyway. Trying. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's get into goals. What what are your uh, do you have like revenue goals, job goals? Um, yes, all the above. So, and again, these might change a little bit over the next two weeks, I'd say, but like, you know, I would like for us to get to uh, around a million and a half in, in just in this business line mm -hmm. this year. Okay. Obviously more would be better, but I think one and a half, the guy I hired, like he's good. I like him, but he, you know, he's, he's new to this. He doesn't have sales experience. Like, you know, we're right. trying to wrap this up from just more referrals to some more, you know, so one and a half, you know, you know, what does that mean? That means 20 25 products. jobs. Yeah, right. Um, you know, and by the way, one of the products that we're doing right now is 225000 Yeah. Probably the cheapest one that we'll ever do, at least down there, is 40 you okay. know? Um, but you're probably, you're, you're kind of like your median number is probably like 60, 65. Anyway, yeah, you know, but 20 products, if you think about it, depending upon the seasonality, the weather, you know, some projects, like a small project, a $40,000 project, you're in and out of in a week, basically. Mm -hmm. A longer one, like this $200,000, you know, it's been six weeks. So, you know, you start to think about it. We could theoretically do more than 20 projects in a year. But if, you know, if the average becomes two weeks a project and then you've got some bad weather in there, yada, 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 that feels like about the right number, you know? Yeah, that seems right. You only got about, so what, six to eight months, depending on the weather. Yeah, I mean, anyway. this year we're still doing it in January, but next year we could be we could lose three months easily. So, and if um, would you have to would you have to grow your staff to do that? Like, would you have to hire anybody else or twenty to twenty five jobs? Need, is good to, to do twenty to twenty five projects. No, I mean, I okay. think the guy who does it would be busy, but I don't think we need to grow. I think to go beyond that, we would need to grow. Okay, um, not necessarily management, but specifically crews. We would need more crews. How many how many hardscaping jobs in that price range do you think is done in that area, your service areas in a given year? If you had to get if you had to guess, 
I don't know. That's a good question that I probably should have a, a better answer to. I mean, I know, E, I mean, I don't know. You've seen Klein down there, right? Like, who else? Yeah, is yeah. That? yeah. Um, I mean, there's got to be thousands, honestly. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if we're talking about 2,000 or 5,000, but I mean, given the number of houses that down, uh, it's got to be thousands. Between pools and then just new construction, most new construction houses are getting something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. A lot of building going on and all that stuff. Yeah. So. I don't have a great answer to that, but it's it's a hell of a lot more than the six or seven I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the only the only reason why I the only reason why I asked that is because you know what what kind of revenue share do you uh, not revenue, what kind of job share do you actually need in order to get to that goal, at least not the first much. year goal? Not That's much, right? Know. Not much. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, so candidly, just, again, not like you guys will, you know, hopefully you'll get us however many a year, but like if we get another pool company or two, we'll probably get to twenty. You know, yeah. so then like if you guys get us another whatever 20, I don't, I don't even know. Like, we'll figure that out as we go. Right. But like, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it's not much. It's really not. OK, sweet. Um, So you said Hardscape, you're not doing any advertising. Do you do any advertising for your other business? No. OK. Really don't. I mean, we have a website, you know, and then like our individual, like our properties have their own, will have their own website. So like those are more targeted. Um, But no, we don't. All right. So I would say the best uh, I was going to ask, what has worked best up to this point for getting new customers? That would be referrals development deals, though. That's just more about buying the land. Yeah. So so when you're meeting with I, I know when you're getting a referral from a pool company, typically, you know, how does it work? Are you giving the the price? Or are you giving it to the pool company to give for them to give the price? How does that no, work? They they don't have anything to do with it other than to say like, you know, Hey, use them, you know, James, they, they, they can't mandate it obviously, but the, like, they'll just like, they'll make the introduction of like, Hey, James is putting in a new pool at such and such an address. You know, here's his number, you know, give him a call basically. Mm-hmm. Now they, for some reason, and I don't really understand why they do it. They typically, and not that just today, other pool companies will do it too. will include say the coping, which is the stuff like right around the edge of the pool. And like, two or 300 square feet of paper around that, they'll include that in their price. Gotcha. Um, but then anything, but like, we haven't had anyone do just that yet. I mean, because that's not enough, mm-hmm. right? So, but anyway, they'll include, I think it's like a way for them to kind of like fudge their numbers a little bit, to be honest with you, but whatever. Um, point is anything that goes above and beyond that, like we negotiate whatever we negotiate. I don't pay them a referral fee, you know, like it's just, it's whatever we can work out. You know. Gotcha. I was going to ask that. So you, they don't get anything for referring you. They don't get anything. You know, okay. when I see them, I buy them a beer. But other than that, not much more. All right, cool. And when you're giving the price to somebody, like, is it just here's what I can do? Here's the price. Like, you don't have any like any special. Like, I'll throw this in, or like we haven't done any of that yet. I mean, like we, like all businesses, right? Like we're I, I play with the pricing a little bit. You know, you know, candidly, part art, part science depends upon how price sensitive I think the client is. You know, I'm just kind of like doing a, a budget, a, an estimate of like how much I think it's actually going to cost us, throwing some contingency on there, it's profit margin, and, you know, kind of going from there. Um, we're not, there's no special deals or like, hey, false specials or anything, you know. Yeah. Sometimes like um, in in this, in GCing and, and uh, you know, any home improvement and stuff like that, typically, you know, outside of a price would be fast. Right. So, you know, you could always the offer could always be, you know, getting it done. And depending on the job, we can get it done as little as seven to 14 days, whatever it might be. But in the end, it's just to get you get you to get the quote and try to close a deal. I mean, that's it's just trying to get them to the. I mean, the one advantage that we legitimately do have is that we typically as long as we don't have any um, delays getting the material, which sometimes we do. Yeah we typically can service clients down there faster than like a client or someone like that who Mm -hmm. I don't know for a fact, but I mean, I've heard sort of secondhand, you know, they'll, they'll tell people, Oh, well we can get you on the schedule in September. Like if they call now and I'll be like, Hey, we can probably get papers in three weeks. We'll, we'll schedule you for four weeks from now if the weather's okay. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, that's what I mean. I got, we're putting a pool down in Ortley and it like, it was like a year and a half just for the pool. And it was like, um, all right, cool. I mean, most of these questions I answered. So I, I guess basically, Really, what it comes down to is, um, you know, typically in a in a situation like this, right? Like you need a website, obviously, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Really, only for uh, if you're going to run ads, people are going to Google the company, and they should have somewhere to go, right? 
rather absolutely. than just what's that? Yeah, absolutely. And so I actually was like working on one last week on just like something simple on Wix. I mean, we can eventually replace that in the future or right away for that matter. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's really just my time. Um, but yeah, so that one would be specific just to hardscaping, just to have pictures of hardscaping, have some language on that. You know, you guys can put the, the, the ad words and all that kind of stuff in there, but yes, of course. Okay. So let me just pull this up really quick. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously you understand how this works, but you know, if somebody's searching or we're running pay-per-click, typically you would want your Google business profile, which you would need a website for anyway. Yeah. Um, we're going to, we would create a landing page that is, that is geared toward lead capture okay. websites, websites typically is branding more about branding. Um, and so, you know, you, you want to be able to run ads with a landing page. And essentially, you know, anybody searching, they can find you these three ways, whether it's an ad, whether it's your Google's, Google uh, Google business profile or your website. Yep. And then and then anybody who comes through, we're filtering the leads and following up for a quote. Essentially, that's the third grade way to explain it, which yep. you've done it before. So you understand. <clears throat> um, and so typically so like this is one of a, a client here. Uh, he's in Washington, D.C. Ugliest website in the world. Mm hmm. But it doesn't matter sometimes because ultimately, you know, he's ranking. Uh, we're running ads. It's not the ads aren't going to show here because it's in Washington. Yeah, but you yeah. could see like you know he's ranking third in in the organic listings. So there's a lot of way to skin the cat, right? Fastest way: run pay per click advertising, get a landing page, get a survey in, me measure the traffic, see if the leads are really. Add more filters to it, and create a uh, an automatic way to follow up with them through a CRM, right? Could yes. provide that as well. Very simple. We we have our own CRM that we would run all the ads through. All the contacts would go into it. It would be your own account. You could choose to go in it or not. Uh, we can create automation for the leads that come in to auto text, auto email. If they're a qualified lead, we could have it ring to your phone. I mean, there's a million ways we could do this. So just not to cut you off, but I'm somewhat familiar. So like for the building that I'm in now that we developed, like I've got the Google ads run through the site. If someone puts in a uh, inquiry or whatever, like myself and the woman that I work with both get an email, they, then the person who put it in automatically gets an email offering, like I've got like a Calendly link, mm -hmm. you know, for them to set up a, a call with me, you know, yep. they can schedule it in times that I've pre-selected, yep. right? So yep. something like that is more or less what I have in mind mm -hmm. because what I really don't want is, I don't want, I, well, you guys tell me, but I, I don't want, you know, constant interruption where at like two o'clock I'm in a meeting and I'm getting a phone call from someone I never met, yep. like about a landscaping job. Like I want to put some parameters around it where like we can schedule time anytime you want between two and four on these days or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, and you, you'll have better practices for that than I do. But that's the way I want to think about it personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the lead would come in and then the automation. When I say automations, basically it's it's an email is going to go out to the person um, it, which it, it can include the survey. And if they qualify, they'll go to your calendar. If they don't qualify, they'll never, you know, we'll get in contact with you or sorry, you know, we're busy in the area. We can create whatever it is. So that's yeah. the filtering that I'm talking about. And so, okay. so you're not wasting time, you know, getting on a, uh, on a call with some guy who only has a $2,000 budget. Right. 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 And so that's where the kind of plugging, plugging them into our CRM and then, uh, just having lead flow go through that. And that's typically the way it works. I mean, it's, it's really a simple, it's just a matter of what you're interested in doing and which is fine. We can build it in the future. Um, do you guys do that stuff in house? Like you build sites and all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We do anything web digital. We Okay. I mean, listen, I don't, I mean, <laughs> we should talk more about that in general. Cause like, I mean, even for this building, you know, parachute studios, like, it's good enough, but like, obviously somebody who actually does it for a living would do a better job, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, we take the, we take the approach of, you know, especially in, in an area that you're in, uh, you want to attract the higher end clients. You should probably have a higher end, you know, yeah. brand is Agreed. the best way to say it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, well, I mean, and, and it doesn't take long to do, and it's really not like back in the day, you'd have to spend 10, 15, 20,000 a website. That's yeah. not what it is anymore. Yeah. Um, you could do and I, candidly, I think back in the day is when I probably, you know, business wise, figure out how to do this in WordPress or whatever, because I'm yeah. not going to spend 15 grand because I didn't have 15 grand. Yeah. And now I do, but I'm still have the mentality of like, ah, I just go on Wix and I'll like just make this because I can. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I get it.
I get it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't rather have you guys do it. And especially as, as we buy new buildings, like, you know, if you guys can be that one stop shop, like that's helpful for me, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, time is worth money. So of course I, it is. Yeah. I agree. You just have to yeah. feel the value first. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's just, let's just kind of recap, uh, more leads, try to get more customers, making sure that they're not leads. Uh, fastest way for this business really is pay-per-click advertising. Got to get a website. Uh, I would create a landing page geared toward lead capture survey, CRM. Um, and what I could do is to sum it all up, I could just put it in a full proposal. Um, yeah. Eric and I will work on it. And then, That's fine, yeah. and then you just and include kinda... the website if you want, like include okay. like kind of your full, like bag of groceries. Mm -hmm. And then if it turns out that I'm like, you know what, I already spent X amount of hours on this. Like, let's I don't just feel like doing it up and use it. We'll just pull it out if that's right. What's that? I said, feel like, you just don't feel like doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah. The website. Which I don't. I assure yeah. you. Yeah. Cool. So let me ask um, you a uh, last question. What, yeah. what do you think, you know, I, I get funny enough. I get this question a lot. Like how much would you spend? Um, you know, if you could acquire a $60,000 client and, you know, what, what would your budget be for pay-per-click? Do you think? You know, it's funny. And I don't say this to be, to not answer the question because I, I mean, I'll, as I think through this, as you ask me, I'll try and get to a real answer. But I mean, you know, because I've been so lucky as to have like literally gotten them all for free. <laughs> I know it's hard. It's hard to now put the other hat on. It's hard to be like, ah, oh, well, I mean, of course, logically speaking, if I got a, you know, call 40% margin on 60, you know, what's that, you know, 25 grand or something, 25 grand, like I'd be an idiot not to spend 2000 or something for that lead. I mean, or maybe yeah. more, right. Yeah. Like by the same token, like candidly, you know, my whole thinking is like, especially if I can build relationships with other pool, co other companies that can refer me business, mm -hmm. like that literally doesn't cost me a thing. Like, obviously that's like pretty high in the pecking order for me. Um, yeah. you know, but yeah, that said, listen, I mean, if you got us a, I mean, would, would it be worth it for 2000 bucks for a client? Yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think <gasps> that should be budget. Cause like, honestly, my experience, bless you. Yeah. Thanks. My experience so far has been like, and it, even with the building, which I know is apples to oranges, like for 350 bucks a month, I've got, I've got 20 tenants paying the equivalent of, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> I don't know. That's where you'll have to educate me, you know? And obviously I realize that's the business side for you too, but what should my expectation be? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much competition, and I know how Google Ads words works a little. Like, I don't know how much competition there is for those words and all that kind of thing, too. You know. Yeah, that that'll be included in the in what I send you. Um, okay. We'll do that market research. <clears throat> I mean, what you know, like I mean, I said two thousand just because that's like say roughly ten percent of or eight or nine percent of the value, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's right. Is the truth. Well, there is no right or wrong. Yeah, um, right. It's more about expectations because, um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot less of your of of your ideal client out yeah. there rather than somebody who, you know, who's going to go and do, you know, 20 jobs a month to do small jobs. Right. <clears throat> there's always like that low hanging fruit. You're going to get more of those less money. And so you do have to filter through those. Um, and so the obviously the cost to acquire will be um, more. Now, it doesn't say that we can't um, include on the, um, you know, the landing pages for, or including the keywords, pool companies looking for partnering up with, uh, you know, hardscape landscape. And, you know, I don't know how that works. Like, I don't, I don't know what your experience is with that. Like with like being able to generate business to business real leads, mm -hmm. you know, like our the very basic way right now has been like to call up a couple guys, ask them who they're using and ask them if they're happy and, you know, see if we can take them to lunch, you know, the old school way. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, you know, there, there, there's a service in, in, in there, um, just in, in the marketing world where we would like literally scrape every pool company in the area, yeah. uh, create a, uh, an automation in the back of, uh, you know, of an email like, like that, or a text message to say, Hey, you know, in, with an introduction, if you're interested, just, you know, reply back. Um, so of course there's, you know, yeah, and that would be interesting to me because obviously they can give you repeat business too, you know, and yeah, candidly, yeah. that lead would be worth more to me. I mean, if you're just asking me apples to apples, like I'd rather pay you guys more for that lead than for the mm -hmm. retail customer that even if they sign with us, it's one and done, right? Maybe they'll tell their friend, but that's about it.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, the, the partnership will always be worth. It, but that's kind of like the thing that you you're kind of running in the background and in, in developing the, those relationships. But the initial contact um, could be set on a mass scale rather than just like you know trying to call one by one type thing. No, that would be great. I mean, let's we're a small team. I mean, I got a team of four people. Like, yeah, you know, we don't have time to be calling every buddy who could be referring us. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you got to pick. You know how it is. You got to pick the right fights to fight. Hundred percent. Sweet. Well, I think I got all the information I need. Eric, you oh, got cool. anything?